Resuming debate. Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I'm rising, Mr. Speaker, in support of the motion tabled by my colleague, our uh, official opposition critic on agriculture. I fully support uh, the call, both for the removal of the minister, the reassignment of the food safety portfolio, and I'll speak to that a bit more, uh, reversing the cuts in the deregulation of the food safety regime, and an independent assessment by the Auditor General of whether or not we're proceeding in a way that will ensure food safety for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to start with a quote from a former progressive conservative minister of the environment. And uh, Tom McMillan, when he tabled the first version of the Canadian Environmental Protection Act in this place, he also made an historic decision to table an enforcement and compliance policy. And in making that decision, he transformed the way of doing business uh, for governments across this country, both federal, provincial, and territorial. And when he tabled this enforcement compliance policy, Mr. Speaker, he said, a good law, however, is not enough. It must be enforced ruthlessly if need be. Well, Mr. Speaker, in no place is that more significant in the case than in the case of food safety. All of those in the House may not be aware, but back in 1997, the decision was made, I think then, by a Liberal government to transfer responsibility for food safety, I believe, from the Health Department to Agriculture. So that now, the then created Canadian Food Inspection <coughs> Agency um, was designated to report to the Minister of Agriculture. And so very clearly, if you look in the legislation, the Minister of Agriculture is the highest authority in all decisions on food safety. The Health Minister, though, did retain responsibility to assess the effectiveness of the CFIA in food safety. And I think it would be fair to suggest, Mr. Speaker, that there was some controversy at the time in that transfer. And it's because of the issue that a number of people have raised in this House previously. And that is that, regrettably, the Minister of Agriculture retains a con conflicting portfolio where he is there to try to promote the food industry of Canada, including its export, and that includes the beef industry. At the same time, he has this other hat that he's supposed to put on from time to time, or at exactly the same time, to protect food safety for Canadians. Now, around at the same time, interestingly, the government made a decision that it removed the regulation of pesticides, the oversight of the use of pesticides by farmers from agriculture, but at the same time put in food safety into agriculture. Mr. Speaker, that may have been the beginning of the problem, and that is why we're sincerely raising this issue today, this motion. We're calling on the government to again look at this and see if it's meeting the needs of Canadians, the safety in their food, and to protect the interests, frankly, of food producers so that their industry is not put at risk. Has this crisis in Excel triggered a review? Well, so far it appears not. There's a lot of denial of any kind of problem whatsoever. Um, previously, the government in the Listeriosis crisis called in uh, a health expert, Sheila Wetherill, um, to review problems, and she made a number of recommendations. Now, interestingly, Mr. Speaker, uh, when we look at uh, Dr. Weatherall's report, she said that coincidental to the events that led to the 2008 outbreak of listeriosis, a new federal meat inspection system, the compliance verification system, was introduced. So this system, which we've talked a lot about in this place, this compliance verification system, was brought about, as I understand, because of this crisis that occurred previously in the food um, safety industry. But Dr. Weatherall added, what we were told of gaps in the compliance verification system design and implementation in the ongoing management and delivery um, of that system. And those deficiencies, she said, are noteworthy because inspection requirements can only be as strong as the regulatory policies and standards against which compliance is verified. She then goes on, Mr. Speaker, to raise a number of concerns, including a number of sources had said that the lack of staff was a major constraint, as was the pressure of time. Well, I think, Mr. Speaker, those are certainly two factors that we've seen raised repeatedly during the time of this crisis with food safety in XL Foods. The Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Speaker, has a duty to identify potential conflicts in his portfolio as does the Prime Minister. It's the prerogative of the Prime Minister from time to time with his Cabinet to reconsider the portfolios and where they are assigned. 
The Minister has been clear in his mandate to promote Canada's beef industry. There's no doubt about that. But in failing in his parallel mandate to ensure food safety, surely he has put that very beef industry at risk. Why is there a need for an independent review, Mr. Speaker? The government saw the need to bring in Dr. Wetherill, as has been mentioned here in Listeriosis. Why not then, is there not the need, when this is the largest food recall in the history of this country, why then does it not appear logical to this government? One would have thought they just would stand up and say, my goodness, we've got an even greater problem this time. Perhaps we should take a, a second look at our system and retake a look at the weather report. Have we acted appropriately? Let's talk to the food industry. Let's talk to the public. Let's talk to the union and the workers. It is important to remind this place of the name of the agency, Mr. Speaker. It is the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Why do I point that out, Mr. Speaker? Because what has happened is this government has chosen to replace an enforcement and compliance regime, which is common in all the other agencies at the federal level and across the provinces and territories of this country, and frankly, Mr. Speaker, from my experience, across nations of the world. They have replaced the enforcement compliance policy, which would normally direct the role of the government agency. They've replaced that what's called a compliance verification system. Well, generally speaking, Mr. Speaker, a compliance verification system is a system that is applied by the industry being regulated. In other words, their role is to comply with the law, and therefore they put in place a compliance verification system. So let's be clear, Mr. Speaker. The government's job is to establish the food safety rules and to enforce them, and the government's job is also to ensure that they protect the public. The industry's job is to comply with the law, including training all their workers to ensure the capacity to comply and taking timely action to prevent harm. Well, as I mentioned, uh, Mr. Speaker, beginning in the mid-1980s, previous federal governments moved to improve the way that they actually enforce the law. And they put into place enforcement compliance policies from time to time improve them. I'm pleased to say, Mr. Speaker, that back in the late 1980s, I actually developed the enforcement compliance policy for the Department of Agriculture. I further developed enforcement compliance policies for the Federal Department of Environment, for the Yukon, and around the world. So I fully credit those governments have taken that measure. It is very important to have a concise, credible system to show the public that you're sincere about enforcing. What is the role of an enforcement compliance policy? It's very clear and simple. It clarifies the roles and responsibilities for inspections, investigations, analysts. It clearly delineates the criteria for response to violations or non-compliance. And it identifies the priorities for targeted inspections. It also identifies the needed enforcement staff, the resources needed, and the training plan, so that the government at the moment that that law comes into effect is ready to properly enforce that law. Very, very important measures. So as the previous Minister of Environment had said, a law enacted is hollow unless you actually have a sincere, effective enforcement compliance plan. The CVS, as we said, is not the enforcement compliance policy. Well, what does it say, Mr. Speaker? It says that inspectors shall divide their time between assessing establishments' safety assurance programs and conducting on-site inspections. It also says that compliance is normally achieved through cooperation with the plant operator. So already, Mr. Speaker, we're getting an idea of the direction that this government is going down. No longer is, is it believing that it actually is the role of the Canadian uh, Food Inspection Agency to inspect and enforce the law. The enforcement compliance policy actually had criteria set out for which enforcement action to bring, and that was based on harm, the history of that operation, and the intent. And Mr. Speaker, if we look at the situation here and we look at the past record of that operation, surely that warranted some kind of strict enforcement action. To date, Mr. Speaker, 
We don't have any knowledge of any enforcement action whatsoever taken. They did finally, eventually, withdraw the license. But we're waiting to hear what kind of enforcement action will be taken. Will it be a monetary penalty, the maximum of which is $15,000, for a serious, significant violation? Or will they be referring for prosecution? So, Mr. Speaker, again, I just wish to reiterate that it is just as important this government is saying they've solved all the problems. They are tabling a new improved law in this place. We've waited a long time for that law to come. I would encourage that this government, Mr. Speaker, table in this House an enforcement compliance policy for review by this place and the public. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I just, I just want to comment on uh, the fact that she was saying that the, you know, the government hasn't done much. We have Bill S-11 right here in Parliament. Uh, the opposition has the opportunity to move that bill to committee where it can be studied thoroughly by the Agriculture Committee. If the opposition wants to propose amendments, they can do so clause by clause at the Agriculture Committee. Um, and yet they're, they're holding it here in uh, Parliament. So, Mr. Speaker, really two questions. Has she read Bill S-11 so she sees what important measures there are regarding food safety and CFIA regulatory uh, powers within that Act? And secondly, why will she not allow it to go to committee uh, in the shortest time uh, possible so that we can move this through Parliament? Well, member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well... I don't think the public are seeing any credibility in this move. They know that this problem has been going on for quite some time. This government has been in power for, what, six years? And now they are bringing forward an improved, supposedly, food safety law? I've taken a look at that law, Mr. Speaker, and I can't see a lot except for an increase in the potential penalty if someone is prosecuted. And what I'm putting to this government is we don't even see any basic enforcement action, let alone moving towards prosecution. A law which proposes higher penalties is hollow unless there is sincerity and, com and commitment in this government to support it, is its enforcement agency to be pulled away and separated from this relationship tied to the industry, to separate them out, make them independent, and allow them to enforce the law no matter what it is. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I think that we need to put it in the perspective of that this is indeed the, the largest, single, most significant size in terms of a, a recall of a food product in, in the history of Canada, from what, from what I understand. And uh, there is no doubt that the government has not been forthright and transparent in regards to uh, reporting it to, to uh, the public and their actions have been questioned uh, to date. And my question to, to the member is, uh, and I appreciate her comments in regards to the history uh, back in the 90s uh, of bringing forward uh, the uh, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, but my question to the member is, does she believe that the government is adequately resourcing uh, the uh, Canadian Food Inspection Agency to ensure that they have the, the hands-on uh, in order to ensure the quality of the, of the product that our consumers are going to be consuming and to protect the integrity uh, of our uh, industries, in particular in the prairies regarding uh, beef. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his question. Regrettably, I cannot in all sincerity give him an easy answer. And that is precisely why we called for an independent review by the Auditor General. We've asked repeatedly, where exactly have these supposed new inspectors been assigned? And it becomes e increasingly apparent that these so-called six or seven hundred new inspectors are simply replacing the six or seven hundred that were there before and are assigned to other duties. As I mentioned, Mr. Speaker, in a framework for effective enforcement of a critical law such as food safety, you need a whole framework. So we need the government, first of all, to give us that framework. How many inspectors are needed to ensure food safety in these operations? What kind of resources do they need? And what kind of training have they been provided? And will they amend the Act to include whistleblower protection for the workers so that they can bring those issues to the attention of the inspectors? Question and comment. Deputy de Drummond. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank my Honourable Colleague for her excellent speech and for having pointed out that 
What we are doing today is something that is very rare. We're calling for the resignation of a minister. That's not something that we do commonly. If we're doing so, it's because the situation is serious. The uh, Conservatives have slashed $56 million from the uh, CFIA's budget, the Canadi Canada Food Inspection Agency. And what that means is that there are crises like uh, the one we have seen and that endangers the health of Canadians. And the minister in question, the Minister of Agriculture, has really, he really lacked leadership, showed inaction, and still today he is showing a lack of responsibility and accountability with regard to this crisis. So what I would like to, to ask my colleague is whether the minister should resign for not having performed his duties. Ascona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the honourable member for his question. Um, as a number of the members in the House have said, the request for a minister to re resign is not taken lightly and it is not done frequently by this party. Um, at many times, um, this side of the House requested that the Prime Minister intervene and replace the minister. Why did we do that? Because the minister was clearly not accepting his responsibility for this matter and to move more expeditiously. He simply was not admitting that there was a problem with the system in place. Therefore, he has the power to resign. He has that power. He could take on another portfolio. So we're simply asking him to do the right thing. Resuming debate.